Welcome to this week's edition of Wednesdays in the Word. I'm Children's Ministry Director Chris here at Christ Community Church. For those of you who missed last week's edition, Pastor Irwin began to teach us some of the truths found in Philippians 4. This week, we're going to shift our focus, and we're going to look at the promise of godly wisdom. Even as young children, we begin to learn the truths of life in this world. I want us to start with some examples of wisdom from children. No matter how hard you try, you can't baptize cats. If your sister hits you, you don't want to hit her back because they always catch the second person. And you just can't trust your dog to watch your food for you. I think I'll just leave that one there. And finally, one of my favorites, you can't hide your broccoli in the bottom of your glass of milk. Yeah, that's true. It even floats. Hmm. They're right on that one. So if you would turn with me as we look at our, the scriptures tonight on godly wisdom, let's look at James chapter 1, verses 2 to 8. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all, without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind." For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. So as we look here at James 1, first of all, we can see that James is writing to believers, those who have already accepted the free gift of salvation offered by Jesus Christ. So we have to be saved before we can receive godly wisdom. Secondly, verse 2 tells us that we will all have situations in our lives that are difficult. Things are going to happen that challenge us. James calls these trials, but he doesn't just say we will face them. He tells us that we should face them with joy. He starts out by saying, consider it pure joy. When someone we love or when we get sick, do we usually think of that as joy? Is there an, if there's an accident, do we consider the accident joyful? If people make fun of us for our faith in Jesus Christ, do we consider it joy? This idea of counting it all joy or considering it all joy does not mean that we're able to be happy all the time. None of us will ever be happy all the time. In fact, that's exactly one of the things James is telling us in his book. Believers will not be happy all the time. Now, there's a difference between happy all the time and joyful all the time. I may not be happy I lost a loved one or had a car accident or I might not like getting the flu but I can still be joyful in these trials, knowing that because of them, I can grow. I can continue to know Jesus better. I can be joyful because Jesus is with me in the midst of every single trial. James then goes on to answer the question, how can we receive the promise of godly wisdom? As we just read in verse 5, the scriptures tell us to ask for wisdom. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. God wants us to follow him and to have his wisdom, true wisdom. As we have been studying each week, we know God keeps his promises. He is delighted to keep his promises. 
And this promise to us as his people is no different. He is delighted to give it to us. However, James does go on to warn us. But he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. God knows the condition of our hearts. When we're committed to trusting him and obeying his word, he pours out his wisdom on us. But if we want to retain the right to disobey him, we are double-minded and we may not receive the wisdom that we ask for. So as we continue our look at godly wisdom, let's turn to James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. And here we're going to read as James contrasts worldly wisdom with godly wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Be his good conduct. Let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy, jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For when where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. James begins here in verse 13 by questioning who is wise and understanding. This question prepares us for the contrast that's to come, again, between those that are wise and understanding because of their faith and their reliance on God, and those who rely on the world for their wisdom and understanding. How is the wisdom of the world described in these verses? How is the true wisdom from God described? Well, the wisdom of the world is described as bitter envy, selfish ambition, boasts, denies, denial of the truth, disorder, evil practices, and being unspiritual. Whereas the wisdom from above is described as pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruits, impartial and sincere. James closes these 18 verses by saying, a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. James is reminding us that the good works are a result of our salvation. We need to pursue wisdom through prayer, through our relationship with Jesus Christ, and through our reading and study of God's word. What does godly wisdom look like today? Wise people make the most of their time in knowing and doing God's will, whereas the fool wastes spiritual opportunities. Each day, opportunities are lost to know God better, to serve Him, and to build up His people. My challenge to you is to continue to study God's Word and seek out His wisdom Grow in your relationship with him each day, seeking to do his will for you. Cease the opportunities, the moments he provides for you to share his love, share the gospel, and build up his people by encouraging them. What does godly wisdom look like today? Wisdom. Oh. What does godly wisdom look like today? Wise people make the most of their time in knowing and doing God's will. Whereas the fool wastes spiritual opportunities, each day opportunities are lost to know God better, 
to serve him and build up his people. My challenge to you is to study God's word and seek out his wisdom. Grow in your relationship with him each day, seeking to do his will. Seize the opportunities, the moments he provides for you to share his love. Share the gospel and encourage other believers to do the same. Next week, we'll be wrapping up this Wednesday in the Word series on God's promises with Pastor Brett, who's going to teach us about making promises to God. We're excited to have you tune in again with us next week. God bless you and keep you.